and welcome to Miss Vicky's Bookcase. I hope you're having a wonderful summer's day. It's kind of the weird thing in England where one minute it's absolutely pouring it down and then it's sunny. So I kind of have had both juxtapositions already this morning. So let's move on to the main graft of why you're here and that is to see what I have decided to do in my bullet journal this month. And I decided to go with the theme of stained glass windows and a hankering to do something a bit more elaborate than I've been doing the past couple of months. And I thought, I've got a little bit of extra time. Why not? Yes, why not indeed? I tell you that the drawing of the top part of the windows drove me bananas. I tried just drawing it by eye. I tried drawing it with compasses, all kinds of rulers. Yeah, it didn't work. In the end, you could probably see me doing the um, hand drawing, the hand lining, I should say. Sorry, not hand drawing. I decided to just freestyle it. I had the main graft of what I wanted and I just hand drew it. And yes, I did kind of muck it up a little, but, you know, it adds personality and uniqueness to the picture. At least that's what I'm telling myself as I look and sigh. Once again, not being able to get a perfect picture. It does get a little bit worse and there's a funny story to go with the next page, but I'm going to keep that for the next page, so to speak. I should also mention that this is quite a long video because it did actually take me way, way longer than I was expecting it to. And this is actually even speeding up even more than I normally do. So I did try to keep it under 10 minutes, but my apologies, it's just not going to end up that way. But it does mean you get to see more of what I did. And I'll tell you a little bit about my thinking behind why the stained glass windows, or rather the subjects in the stained glass windows, because it is a very bit of an odd choice. So whenever I think of stained glass windows, I always think of the Disney's animated Beauty and the Beast. I absolutely love those stained glass windows at the very beginning and at the very end. And it'd be copywriting to actually copy them. So this is my take on it a little bit instead. So on the very far left hand side, we have a rose representing Beauty. And this is because in the original story, Beauty's father actually collected a rose for her because that was what she wanted um, him to get her when he went away. And he, of course, broke a rose off from the garden. And the beast basically said, you know, you've got to bring your daughter back. So I thought that a rose was a very much a great representation of beauty and it doesn't hurt that it reminds me again of beauty and the beast now i decided on the right hand side to do a beast and i couldn't do the traditional beast because one i can't actually fit him in there and two it'd be like weird profile so i thought what other beast could i put in i thought why not have a beholder if you're wondering what that is, it's a beholder. So it's a creature that controls the minds and have lots of eyes. I thought that'd be really fun to put a monster or a beast in the right hand pane that wouldn't necessarily be a character in a novel, but now I feel like I need to write one with it in because he looks pretty cool, or rather they, because there's three of them. Um, that was because it looked nicer to do like three rather than the one on stemmed rose. It kind of makes sense. And in the middle two columns, I decided to go with a 20 sided dice, most because it fits really well with the theme, like with the beholder and monsters and kind of beauty, because you could do a role playing game with beauty. And I like the thought that it would work well in the space that I had and with the stained glass shards again, because they're all triangular, it would work really well. And I've really enjoyed having them there. I do think I made the red a little bit too dark, but that's okay because in some ways it actually works better with it being too dark. You just can't see the lines too well. And actually thinking about it, that probably is a good thing because you could probably tell that if I did draw with the ruler the first time around and then when I went over it, I was like, I cannot be bothered to draw with the ruler again to highlight it. I'll just freestyle it. And of course, I cannot draw straight. What I really did like actually that worked very well was just the shards of glass around the main pictures that I drew. I really liked it. I wasn't too happy actually about the colours. I mean, the blue, the very first blue that I did, I thought was great, fantastic, wonderful. However, I used a kind of like a jade colour and I kind of hoped it was a subtle change and it kind of was. 
and that again was fine but I wanted it darker and I could have gone over it again but at this stage I was running out of time because although I had a lot of time to do this in by the time I got to the painting I had spent quite a lot of time drawing <laughs> the windows and trying to get the window structure right which I evidently didn't do because I can look at it now and it looks really wonky but it's fine <laughs> and going back a little bit with the colour I do like the emerald colour and in some ways actually it works really well I then it's not that I think I've spoilt it but I did do a dark blue and here we can see me putting the dark blue on now and it's okay but yeah, I feel like it kind of washed out the emerald and made it seem very much like the light blue. But I kind of still needed something darkish. Maybe I could have made the emerald a bit darker. Or I made the light blue lighter. I could always try it again. Maybe I might next year do a uh, revisit of some of the subjects I've done the last two years. I think it might be nice to do something like that to see how far I've come because this is why I like having a physical thing to look at sometimes because I can go back and see all the different things I've tried and can go back and revisit to do something similar so I can see if my skills have ever upgraded and it always takes me by surprise when I realise actually I do things quite naturally now that used to take me a longish time. <laughs> Some things still take me a long time and that's okay. So going back to the picture a little bit now I thought I'd mentioned that I decided to do a mix for this spread so I do painting and I use pencil crowns I thought it might be, be a little bit easier to do the window part in a grey pencil just then I don't have to mix up uh, the gouache I was being lazy and two it's nice to have like a mix of stuff so also if you hadn't guessed I used gouache this time I kind of fancied using it and it's been a while and I still need to get hang of it. I don't think I use enough water. Uh, that's probably why the red dice were a little bit um, saturated because I was really laying it on quite thickly and I was struggling a little to get it to stick where I wanted to. But I think that's just because I was trying to do it too quickly and I didn't work as well as I wanted it to. So the other thing I also wanted to mention in this particular page is that I had to go over the dice again. I actually did forget to. Oh well. And I went over the flower again and I think I did a tiny bit of the monster just so it popped a little bit better because although I drew the lines and then rubbed out the pencil for once first, um, it was having problems because I just painted over it so that was a bit of a downside but I will say changing again subject I really enjoyed the use of the gel marker for the dice that worked really well I was very proud of that well now that we're moving on to the uh the next uh page this is my TBR or Tabura as I call it and red page and as you can already see there's some blue drawing on my picture now this is the funny story time. Well, I say funny story, it's just me not paying attention because two things happened on this page. I was so determined to get this absolutely spot perfect that I was like, right, if I draw one side, I'll just get my special tablet thing and I can trace it and then do the same the other side. And I got the piece of paper, I got my little light box out and I started drawing it and I was feeling really, really proud of myself. I pulled the piece of paper out to look at what it looked like and then realised I'd stupidly put the paper underneath what I was drawing, not on top of it, so I'd been drawing over my actual drawing with a blue pen. <laughs> Which is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I obviously wasn't paying attention. I was doing this, by the way, quite late at night. My brain doesn't function well at night and you can tell because it was blue. I did decide I'll just draw over it in the waterproof pen and then I'm sure it won't look that bad. Well, it kind of does because I had to use the thick pen for the lines that I was using a smaller pen. So I was using a 0.5 to do most of the thick drawing and then I used a 0.3 to do the shards of glass just so it gives a great uh, depth feeling to it. And actually looking at the 
picture that's not in real life. Hmm, that did work quite well. I'm impressed. Anyway, uh, the other mistake, I'm not going to call it a mistake, it's just a happy accident because I evidently was so tired. When I was drawing the second uh, flower, I realised that I had done the right side a centimetre taller than the left side. And I hadn't even noticed. So much for trying for a perfect spread, right? But again, it's absolutely fine. I just have a funny story to tell people when they ask me why is one side bigger than the other. Or I could think of a more fantastical reason, but it's simply uh, when I was drawing the lines for the arches, I was using a compass by this stage and I'd evidently been rubbing out. You can't tell, but this page is incredibly creased for the amount of rubbing out from trying to draw those arches. And I must have evidently rubbed out lower than I thought and had drawn the arches back in because I was trying to do it quickly a couple of nights ago and it just didn't work the way I wanted it to. But it's fine, it's fine. Anyway, so going to the picture itself. So as you can tell, we've got beauty on both sides and what represents beauty the best? A good old book. So I put a pile of books in and I decided that I would just colour the books in pencil crayon just because again it's a little bit easy to do in some ways I almost should have done the shards in pencil as well just because it was quicker than me trying to paint things and let things dry because as usual I'm too impatient to wait but again overall I think it worked really nicely having the main item in the picture a nice vibrant colour with vibrant colours as the shards and then kind of like the faded books make it a little bit nicer oh at least I think it does and of course I have the lettering that I used last month because it is my simple go-to lettering and if I practice it enough it will be fine although I'm looking at this now and I have distinctly drawn red Weirdly, the E and the D seem way bigger than the R and the A. How weird. I didn't even notice. How oh, well. <laughs> it's half the fun, as I said. Um, so this is now moving on to the one page that I basically didn't colour. This is going to be the line only because this is my tracking page for my reading and for my audio listening. And I'm kind of excited to be using this for the spread next month to colour in all the different dice. Yes, I did use dice for these two pages because this is so much easier to colour in if you're trying to be quick. <laughs> That's why I like the idea of having dice to colour in because it's a good shape that I can really quickly colour rather than the weird elaborate ones I could have done if like it was a rose. I suppose I could have just coloured in 20, 31, sorry, petals but then I couldn't have done different colours. That Well, I could have, but the thing in me was like, no, I don't want a rose with different colours. So it was dice. And you'll definitely notice again a difference between the right side and the left side. Being left-handed, I always start on the right side just so I don't get ink on my hands. Well, at least that's how it's supposed to happen. It doesn't quite work like that. Anyway, with the right side, I was using the ruler and I was trying to be quick again because I was like, this won't take me long. No, this took me over 20 minutes. So this is a bit sped up, but yeah, it took me 20 minutes. Um, and with the right side, by the way, when I did draw the extra shards of glass in, you can barely see where the dice are going to go. And you kind of can tell because I did do the glass shards behind it a little in the 0.3 rather than the 0.5, which is why I did the rest in. But I did overdo the line drawing because I was too draw happy with the ruler. I was trying to think, oh look, we can just draw a straight line all the way down. No, you can't. <laughs> it didn't work quite so well that way. But as you can see on the left, I just hand drew it and I think the left turned out much better than the right side, only because I was hand drawing it and I could then stop cheating. If I say cheating, I don't mean like it's cheating to use a ruler. What I meant was instead of just drawing one line all the way down, I could see where the actual dice finished rather than drawing one line, if that makes sense. And that meant that the left side turned out way better. You can see more distinctly the dice on the left compared to the right. The right is a bit more difficult, but again, that's fine. 
as I'm going to be colouring the dice in and once the dice are coloured in it will make a distinct pattern and I may just leave the background white unless it's part of a date just again so we can see the pop of colour and that I've actually coloured the dates in right but we'll see I might decide to colour it in extra but that's half the fun of being able to do something like a picture to colour in rather than just colouring in squares I can do whatever I like and it'll still look great so we're now on our last page and that is of course the book of the month and I have my beholder the monster as holding on to the book of the month so again in the window most of the bottom half of the window will be the picture that I put in which will be great and then of course the beholder at the top and my favourite lettering which actually turned up way better on this page than the weird other page where apparently I can't keep my sizing right and I have again used a gold metallic marker for this I had actually meant to use a different colour to emphasise the differentness because I used gold metallic last month in my lettering but by the time I remembered and noticed and looked at the other page I was like well it's too late now I'm gonna have to keep, keep the gold marker maybe next month I might try something radically different who knows admittedly I do love those markers a lot they are so cool and I do like the metallic glitteriness so back to the picture and I kept with the green beholder I could have done a different colour but I think the green was just right because it brought in colours from the leaves on the rose and he's got a red tongue so like the red flower so we have colours from the first picture in the last picture which is kind of what you're supposed to do and this basically means that I am ready for the full reveal so here we go in three, two, one, and here we go. So if I flip it all the way back to the beginning of the month, oh, spoiler. So here is my title page. I think it really pops nicely on the screen. Then we have the TBR and red page. This is gonna have pictures in it so the writing from the other pages won't show through. This is my tracking page for my audio and my books, which looks great. And of course, my book of the month. I think looking at it, the book of the month might have been the worst page, but that's fine because it's going to be the last thing I see. I just want to thank you for watching today. I hope that has inspired you to try something new in your bullet journal and to have some fun. As you can see, I'm not perfect by any means and I'm hoping that by my imperfections you'll be able to see that art is a lot of fun and you do not have to be perfect to do it. Anyway, I shall see you next month and I hope you have a great month with your bullet journal and your art. I'll see you next time. Bye!